Hi, I'm Dr. Messina. Frequently, people ask me to review a video or send me a video and ask for my opinion on what was being shown. Recently, I got about 15 different videos regarding picosecond laser tattoo removal. The thing that I found disturbing in this was of the 15 that I reviewed, every one of them had medical errors in them. Some errors were minor, such as saying a picosecond laser fires in a billionth of a second when it really fires in a trillionth, but that is not really clinically significant. But to say it can't burn you, or it can't scar you, or it can't take your pigment away, or that it's going to take a tattoo out in four to five sessions, those are all false statements. And they're dangerous. They're dangerous to you, the patient. I'm a physician. I've been practicing medicine since 1986. And I've been involved in laser tattoo removal since 2005. I've currently lasered over 10,000 tattoos. I also developed some of the settings for a specific laser company for red ink and blue ink. So I'm coming from a point of experience, not a point of anecdotal evidence. In other words, evidence that someone says, hey, this is what happened, and you take it as gospel truth. Cavitation, the whitening of a tattoo after a laser procedure. It only lasts for about 30 minutes. It does not indicate that the tattoo has already been removed. Now, some of the problems I saw in the videos were out and out fabrications, some just misconceptions. And a lot of the times, my gut feeling was the person who made the video hasn't removed a single tattoo yet, or else they would know better. So I'm gonna go over the misconceptions now. And then I'm going to tell you what happened with the laser wrap that I found so offensive. The first thing, picosecond lasers remove tattoos in four to five sessions. Absolutely not true. In fact, if you look at websites where patients discuss their techniques, their therapies, their treatments, you're going to find that they're already up to 10 sessions. Now, the normal Q-switch laser systems remove tattoos anywhere from seven to about 15 treatments in my experience. And what was involved in that was skin type, very important. The color of the ink was very important. The volume of the ink was extremely important and probably even more important than any of the above was the location on the body. Head and neck tattoos come off easier than a toe tattoo or a finger tattoo just because what's taking that ink away is your lymphatic system and lymph flow is greater in the head and neck and significantly lower in fingers and toes. So there is no way under normal circumstances that you're going to remove the tattoo in four to five sessions. That's led to a couple of problems, I think, because in all the years that I've been doing this, it's only in the last three years when the Picos have been around that I'm having patients coming in with complications that I didn't see before. A lot more scarring, a lot more burning, a lot more pigmentary issues. Even though they say it doesn't happen, believe me, I see it all the time. My gut feeling is, is the person doing the laser treatment was told by the sales rep, you're gonna get it out in four to five sessions. When four to five sessions come, and that too is still quite present, my gut feeling is they goose up the power a little bit and then they go beyond the tissue tolerance and they create a burn and a scar and pigmentary changes. That's just my own theory as to why I'm suddenly seeing that when in the last 15 years it was negligible that I saw that. So removing it in four to five sessions that's not going to happen. You're still going to need 10 sessions or more. Someone else said that it will remove all colors because it's firing so fast it's going to shake up the ink and it's going to break up the ink into small particles. Again, not true. 
The only way it breaks up a tattoo ink is when you've paired off what is coming out of the laser as to what that color of ink is absorbing. Black absorbs every wavelength of light, therefore it comes off easier and a whole variety of lasers can be used to take off black ink. Red ink absorbs the KTP wavelength. If you don't have a KTP laser, you're not going to get the red ink out. Green likes the Alexandrite laser and also the Ruby laser. If you don't have one of those, you're not going to get green out. And blue likes the Ruby laser. You might be able to do it with a yak, but it would have to be a very dark blow and it's going to take a lot of treatments. So there is no way that any one laser is going to remove all the colors. The one gross error that I heard was one of the videos, and this was a medical doctor, he said Pico could take out every color, including white and those resistant yellows and golds. That is absolutely not true. No laser is going to take out white. And I tell every one of my patients that who have white in the tattoo. Fortunately, most of the time it's a tooth or an eye or like a little icicle and not a majority of the tattoo. But I tell them every time it might fade it. If it does, it's just pure luck. White does not absorb any wavelength. It reflects every wavelength and that's why it looks white. And because of that, it's not going to absorb your laser. And I don't care how fast the laser is firing, it's not going to break up white ink. Yellow is very difficult because we don't have a laser that is actually putting out what yellow absorbs. Yellow absorbs a wavelength slightly less than the KTP wavelength. So, yeah, I treat yellow tattoos with the KTP laser as if they're red. The wavelength is like 75, 100 nanometers less than the KTP. And I always tell patients I can never vouch for yellow and gold coming out. And I don't care how fast your laser is going, still those are very resistant colors. So you know you have these patients coming in with these anticipations and these promises. And it's already a hardship because tattoo removal is not like aesthetic medicine where we might do Botox and some fillers and peels and some laser rejuvenation and you wind up looking younger and better and less wrinkled. With tattoo removal, we're just hoping to get your arm to look like the other arm. So there's the positive outcome is not the same. It's, it's not the same as aesthetic medicine. The other thing I heard was that picosecond lasers don't burn and scar and hypopigment you like Q-switch lasers do. Again, not true. In fact, I've seen more burning and scarring with picoseconds than I ever saw in Q-switch lasers. Uh, it's a function of the speed of delivery. When you are putting out X number of joules at the rate that the Pico is firing, it's actually a higher level of energy getting there in that small amount of time. So you have to be extremely careful when dealing with picosecond lasers, and I find that that's not the case. Despite laser tattoo removal being a medical procedure in many, many states, these same states do not really enforce it, and you have extreme variability in who is treating your tattoo. You could go from a board certified physician all the way down to someone who was, who knows, driving an Uber the day before. So you have to be careful with that. In the pictures that I'm showing you here, this is hypopigmentation and scarring in one. What's even worse is this happened after a single picosecond treatment. And this is really an outrageous departure in the standards to cause this much trauma and tissue change, which by the way, probably won't improve in a single session. In these pictures, these are patients that came to my office after having PICO removal. This first person, this was after four sessions with a PICO second laser. And our second patient 
had received five sessions of a picosecond laser treatment. So you can see that that guaranteed four to five is simply not true. There were a lot of misconceptions and a lot of false statements that come from the laser representatives. And that's the fault of the physician for not investigating it further. It occurs because physicians right now are all looking for other avenues of revenue. And aesthetics and lasers seem to be an easy way to do that. They're actually not. There's actually tremendous maintenance that goes into maintaining a laser, and it's quite, quite expensive. But on the surface, it looks very easy, very fast money. And how do these lasers get into the office? Well, representatives come down and they discuss the laser with you. They might even take you to a conference and they're going to tell you things to get you to purchase it. For instance, you're going to get the tattoo off in five sessions and you're not going to burn and scar. It's going to be so safe you won't believe it. Then you find out that this laser on the low end is $175,000. And at the high end, $300,000, and that gets passed off to you, the person getting the tattoo removed. And unless this laser is doing something spectacular, then it's simply not worth it. When they first came to me, I was intrigued. I was intrigued because one of the most difficult things in laser tattoo removal is maintaining the positive momentum, that positive outlook on the patient's end. It's very difficult to keep the morale up when you're going to require 10 sessions at the minimum of six weeks apart, so we're together for a year and a quarter at the very least in general. It's very hard to maintain that type of uplifted spirit. So when I first heard four or five sessions, yeah, I was intrigued. Then when they told me how it, they came to this conclusion that it was going to take four to five sessions, it made no sense because all it did was grind the ink up into a finer dust, making it easier for the immune cells to take it away. But those immune cells are already working at full capacity, so it didn't change anything on that end. So no, I, as soon as I saw that, I knew it wasn't going to do four to five sessions. And I saw what the lasers had, and I knew that each system was a little different. Each system had a different wavelength in it. So you can't say, oh, I want this laser from this company versus this laser from another company. They're going to be two different beasts. Um, that was one thing I didn't care for. And what happened, what happened with that case that I was telling you about was a doctor from one of the nearby states called me up. He already had Q-switch lasers in his practice. He asked me if I thought adding a picosecond laser would increase his practice. And I said, I don't think that it will really benefit your practice that much. You're not going to give a big change to your patients. I just don't think it's worth it. And he told that to his rep. In medicine, we're supposed to have a clear view as to what we're doing for patients and it's supposed to be positive and it's supposed to be honest. Well this representative said it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. You put PICO in your website and people are going to call and come for the PICO. Nothing that they might not get any benefit from it and the other thing about PICO that you should know is a lot of the PICO machines have a Q-switched arm in there. So just because you're using a Pico machine doesn't mean you're getting the Pico laser. In fact, you should be getting a Q-switch laser at least for those first four or five sessions because they found that the Pico second laser did not remove enough ink in the early stages to make a significant difference in your tattoo. Well, I hope you learned something in this video and understand why I do not use Pico second lasers in the practice. 
I use five different Q-switch systems. Granted, each has its own wavelength to target different colors, but they are all Q-switched. So have a great day, take care, and remember to click subscribe if you'd like to see more educational videos.